Sean, I love to understand about quantum mechanics and relativity and understanding reality, but I, I try to find the implications of that and try to find a philosophy. What's the philosophy of physics or, or, or cosmology? And one of the big questions is that in any start to the system, everything is extremely simple. And so the question is, how do you go from the extremely simple to what we have now, which is extremely complex, especially when you have the second law of, therm of, of thermodynamics uh, uh, pushing seemingly in the opposite right. direction? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's an old kind of silly question, right, which says, if you claim that the universe is just winding down, becoming more disorganized, entropy is increasing, the second law, then how in the world do you explain the coming into being without some transcendent purpose of these exquisitely organized <laughs> systems like you and me. And of course, scientists have a cut and dried answer to that. The Earth and its biosphere is not a closed system. And in open systems and ones that are interacting with their environments, entropy can go down. I can put a bottle of champagne in the refrigerator, <laughs> cool it, its entropy will go down. And that's true, but it doesn't explain why it actually does happen. It says it's okay. It's allowed by the laws of physics for complex structures to come into existence here on Earth. But it doesn't say why it does. And I think the answer to that lies in the distinction between entropy, low entropy being orderly, high entropy being disorderly, and simplicity versus complexity. These are two very, very different, different things. Right. I, would, I would argue that not only... Is it allowed that complex structures come into existence as the universe expands and entropy increases? But it is necessary for that process to happen in order to allow complexity to arise. Well, necessary is a very strong word. So how, how do you see that it's necessary? Well, if you didn't have this, this starting with a low entropy universe and expanding and cooling into high entropy, the alternative is you're just at high entropy all the time, right? You're just disorganized, you're thermal equilibrium. And thermal equilibrium, nothing happens. Thermal equilibrium sure. is the simplest, most boring right. state to be. Right, right. So what is then driving this self-organization? Is it the process of gravity, which certainly in the early stages it, it would be, in terms of the formation from this early, simplistic, highly organized, low entry entropy soup or plasma, as it were, mm -hmm. um, that gravity and the small differences in, 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 uh, in the density due to quantum fluctuations or whatever it was, right. is causing gravity to work its magic. Is yeah, it, it's it, definitely an interplay of the different forces. The fact that we have gravity, which only pulls things together, the nuclear force, which holds nuclei together, and electromagnetism, which kind of can push or pull, yeah, depending right. on the situation, all of these play together to allow the complexity to come into being. But it's temporary. The analogy I like to use is cream and coffee mixing together. When the cream and coffee are separate, that's a low entropy, organized system. Mm -hmm. It's also very, very simple. When they're all mixed together, it's high entropy, disorganized, but again, very, very simple. It's in between. When the tendrils of the cream and coffee are mixing into each other, that's when it's complex. It's the fact that entropy is increasing that lets this complexity come into being at least for a little while before it eventually fades away again. And is that your metaphor for the entire universe? The universe does exactly the same thing. The universe starts very simple, very organized and low entropy. It will end in the far future, billions and billions of years from now, simple again because the universe is going to expand and cool and empty out. It will be very high entropy, but once again simple. It's this in-between phase in the middle that you see complexity. You and I are those cream and coffee tendrils mixing into each other. And this is the time that we can see other galaxies they haven't flown away from each other. So th th doesn't that make you wonder about this time and, and, and this oddity that the universe goes from uh, utter simplicity to utter simplicity? And, well, and, and here we have this time. Isn't, isn't that a strange way for, for reality to be? The fact that the universe started in such an extremely simple low entropy state is indeed very, very puzzling. This is one of the primary things that cosmologists spend their waking hours worrying about. The fact that given that we did that, complex structures come into being in the aftermath, and that's the era of the universe's history which we find ourselves is the least surprising thing in the world. I mean, there's mm -hmm. clearly a selection effect. We're very complicated. Mm -hmm. What's the universe going to look like when we wake up and look at it? It's going to be in the complicated Right, but, but you're assuming the existence of those forces. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, that's gravity right. Gravity and electromagnetism and the weak, the right. strong force and the weak force and, and, and uh, quantum wave functions and yes. all sorts of things. You need a universe that is rich enough in its fundamental dynamics to have pushing and pulling. 
on different scales. Right, right. Without both pushing and pulling, you're not going to get complex structures forming. In right. fact, we, we simulated cream and coffee mixing into each right. other, and we found that for some versions, they just sort of smoothly spread into each other and complexity never arose. Sure, sure. For you different quote-unquote laws of physics, they become so complicated. Physics, yeah. But, you know, there wasn't a lot of fine-tuning involved. It wasn't hard to find versions of those laws where they became very intricate and complex. But d d doesn't, it, doesn't it strike you in some odd way that the, you have these very complicated things and quantum wave function and the four forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, we talked about them, and then going from simplicity back to simplicity. I mean, if that's the way reality is. Yeah, it, that's right. That's it, the way it, reality is. It, and doesn't that bother you? No. It makes me curious. I'm wondering why it's like that versus some other way. I'm not sure whether there's a good answer to that, but I would, I would like to know whether there is. But, you know, if we imagine some other being somewhere else in the multiverse where there's eight dimensions of space and a hundred billion different kinds of elementary particles, and they write am amazing epic poetry based on eight-dimensional combinations of, of uh, billions of different elementary particles, and they say, aren't we lucky that we have eight dimensions of space and all these elementary particles, because otherwise we wouldn't have this fantastic richness around it. I have no idea how surprised we should be that the fundamental laws of physics seem to allow for enough complexity to give us not only intricate structures in the universe, but self-aware, information processing, future predicting substructures of the universe. And then disappearing. And then we'll go away, yep. That's and then right. disappearing. It seems like a cosmic joke. Well, it certainly is uh, absurd in the existentialist <laughs> sense, right? There's no reason why it's like that as far as we know. Fortunately, that's what it is. And if you have a multiverse that has all those different components in it with eight dimensions and a hundred billion different, uh, there has to be those some um, multiverse laws that allow you to generate one universe like that that has meaning sure. and another universe like this. So yep, at some point right. you're getting to some deeper fundamental generational law that may be radically contingent as, as you, you may believe. Yeah, and I, mean, I think that's one of the very, very interesting ramifications of modern physics as we understand it, that what you might think of as the once and for all contingent facts about the universe, like the mass of the electron, the existence mm -hmm. of electromagnetism, these very well could be different from place to place. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, then the fact that somewhere in that huge ensemble, there's complex structures like you and me, again, that's not surprising at all. Correct, but you still have to have a, a, a generation mechanism to create all those different universes with those different kinds of laws of physics. Yeah, unfortunately, that seems easy. Uh, so how? How's well, that? inflation uh, makes a lot of space. The, the idea of a universe at very early times can expand exponentially, create an sure, arbitrarily sure. large amount of space. But then space. you have to have a theory of inflation and what causes that. And... Of course, <laughs> but, it, but it's not hard. I think that one of the things about the modern multiverse mm -hmm. that is worth emphasizing is that Cosmologists in the modern era didn't become interested in the multiverse because they thought it would be cool to have a billion different universes. Mm -hmm. They became interested in it because no they choice. developed theories for other reasons that then predicted right. the existence right. of the multiverse.